through the Spirit speaks to us brings us into a spiritual awareness. And it brings to, to birth a consciousness of who we really are. This does, away is what, this does away with our natural perception of who we are and brings us into the consciousness of true life, one that is far above the consciousness of life we've had in the flesh. That's why we can't live there. You can, and I ain't saying to go to work and be goofy. I'm just saying, <laughs> you know, some people hear stuff like that in the 90s and it was a bunch of fruit and flakes, you know, and people would leave their job because God told them to, you know, seriously. I mean, yeah, because you get around the wrong prophet, he'll tell you all kind of stuff. You know, and, and there was imbalances in the prophetic ministry. You know, and, and, and people, it, it, it was some of the nuances that, you know, we didn't have access to that measure of grace before, before the 90s. Now, that, they were prophets, I'm sure, because God always had himself a witness. But I'm talking about, hold on a second. Hello? They had him. <laughs> yeah, that was real. That was real. Somebody called me New Canton. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, I don't know what that I thought. That wasn't me. <laughs> I thought that was here, right? Right. Y'all thought it was Jesus? <laughs> 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 He's on the name of the main man. No, no, thank you. Tell them what you want. <laughs> ask them what you want. <laughs> ask them what you want. Something like that. I just tell them, ask them out. <laughs> but we. But there was a, we, we weren't too aware. We wasn't really, you know what I'm saying? In the 90s, it, they had more manifestation than explanations. Mm -hmm. yes. You know, in the book of Luke, you know, I mean, it was the book of Acts. It was like, this is that. You know, when he taught them about the outpouring, when Joel poured out the spirit in Acts 2, remember, he, did, he stood up and said, this is that. You know, Jesus went to do and to teach. Right. You know what I'm saying? So we need clarification. And I believe God is bringing us back to what was happening in the 90s and bringing clarity to it. Yeah. So that we can have a true wine skin. And I, and I believe, you know, we're going to have that the plowman overtake the reaper moment back in the church. Because we need it. Amen. Amen. Amen? So we can't sell it for, you know, the wine without the wine skin. Okay? You just can't have manifestation. And you just can't have demonstration and manifestation without explanation. Right? That's what the disciples used to do. When Jesus did his works, they got along with him. You can find in the, in the Gospels if you ask them about what transpired on their journey. And that's discipleship, by the way. One one. Uh, yeah, one on one. <laughs> and two, and three, and four, and five. So, I believe in this hour, if we're going to really, I hate to say, take advantage of, but if we're going to really receive, because too many that received them gave them the power. If we're going to really receive certain aspects of who God is, there's going to have to be a level of consciousness and a level of awakening. And if we're going to return to the original pattern, and the original pattern is what I call the Christos, or the Christ pattern. The word Christ, Christos in Greek. You know, Jesus Christ is not Jesus' last name. That's, that's a part of his ministry. And I believe that everything in this hour... If we're going to allow the Spirit to bear witness to us, as we said before, if we're going to allow there to be some tangible residual of the presence of God in our life, we're going to have to go back to the true litmus test and weigh it in the balance. And that's where everything must be measured by Christ. Everything. I'll tell your neighbor, everything, everything has to be measured by Christ. See, our growth has to be measured. The impartations we receive, the glory that we participate in, the information, the revelation that we receive from ministries have to be measured by Christ. Amen? If from that vantage point that no man, no flesh can be uh, based upon their own personal wisdom, but have brought, been brought to the, uh, a certain level of understanding where there is a true Christocentric view of what God is doing in our life. We need to have a Christo centric view. Y'all don't know what that means. Christ center. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. That's what it means. That's the term that you use if you're in seminary. Even though most seminaries don't use it because most folks don't understand the, the, the components of Scripture is based on Christ. That's 
why when he walked to him on the road to Emmaus, what did he do? He talked about himself. Amen. I mean, anybody read Luke 24? Yes, sir. Okay, Elder Cat. In, uh, in Luke 24, it talks about how they were walking to the long walk, a savage journey, mm -hmm. and Jesus had died, and they were miserable, and they didn't know what was going on. Right? And then they seen him. They had a, they seen Jesus after the resurrection, and Jesus spent time with them. And he walked through Scripture, and they had a glorified Bible study. And he told them about law, the prophet. He talked about the law, the prophets, and the Moses, and he expounded concerning himself. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that's where we're going to have to get to because if we don't expound, if we don't allow the Holy Spirit to expound the things concerning Jesus, mm -hmm. then it's a couple of things in Luke 24. I never taught on it, but I mentioned it haphazardly. But if there's a few things that happen, first of all, the scriptures burn in you. Yeah. Then all of a sudden, in another place, it said that he opened up the scriptures to them. Mm -hmm. Right? And then the third level is that. Not only did it burn and he opened up the scripture, he opened up their eyes. Amen. And that's what's going to have to happen with us when we walk by spirit. Of course, we don't have the physical Jesus, but we have the spirit of Christ in us. Yeah. And as we walk on that road of Emmaus, which means warm springs. Anybody need a spring? Yes. Yeah, yeah, I do. I need some a warm spring. You know, if you know anything about springs... It's healing in some springs. Yes. It's the cleansing and the washing and the sanctification that's necessary that only can come to the Father. And so we have to get back to the basics. We have to get a Christocentric way so that we can understand that that's the ministry of the Holy Spirit in our life. Because there's a whole realm that we have yet to walk. There's a whole realm that we have a right to walk in and live in, but we can't see it with these physical eyes. Yes. Witches and warlocks live there continuously. Church folks, we have our cognitive ability. We're unconsciously pitiful as it relates to the realm of spirit. Yes. We're not as sensitive to, to, to God. We, our uh, pneumatology is bad. And if you know anything about pneumatology, it's, it's, it's a threefold thing. Devils, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Our spirit and angels. Yes. So there's some things that we need to be Sensitive. There's a whole realm that's in operation, even though we don't have the tools to help us to participate in that realm, to see the way Father would have us to see. That's why Jesus came. He came to give us the true understanding of the Father as it relates to the spirit realm. Amen? Amen. And so there is a bold New substance in the spirit from beyond the veil of, limit, of uh, no limitations. Herein is the manifest presence of God that is appearing now to us that seek and desire him. For those that seek and desire him. So that manifest presence of the Lord that is appearing now to those that seek and desire him. And in doing so, they should see him as he is. It's okay to be able to go through scriptures and say, okay, man, you know, I, I've, I've seen uh, all of the feats and the favor of God uh, at work in the, old, in, the, uh, in the scriptures, but God wants you to become a participant. He don't want us to just spectate. He want to raise the level of our understanding so that we can be conscious of what the Spirit is sending the earth to do. Amen? Amen. Thank you for those two claps. What is preventing us from seeing spiritually is the veil which is, lies over our hearts. Since Christ is in the unseen realm, we can't see him with the natural eye. Neither the veil nor the unveiling is apparent to the human eye, nor will ever be. In order for us to see Christ, the Holy Spirit has to reveal him to us. I don't know what y'all thought I was going to teach you on the realities of the Spirit's presence. But I'm helping you to understand the reason why you don't have the sensitivity to the realm of spirit because all of the veils that's on you. Veils had to be done away. And not just done away, it has to be taken away. 2 Corinthians 3. And see, you got to understand the whole backdrop of 2 Corinthians 3. Three and four, they connected, brother and sister packages, A and B clauses, mm -hmm. right? 
And um, when you talk about in verse 6, he says something that's so profound. This is uh, Paul talking to the church of Corinth. I wasn't going to include this, but I think I have to because I have to get us there. Put it that way. Who has also, verse 6 said, who also has made us what? Now let's go to 5. No, 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 no. You know, uh, yeah, let's stay here because I already got this further down. I was going to use this later, but I'm just going to show you something. Uh, yeah, verse 6. Who also has made us ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. We'll talk about that if the Lord allows me. But if the ministration of death, written and engraven in stones, was what? Glory. How glorious was it? They seen lightning, they seen darkness, the mountains shook, full of glory, right? Mm -hmm. So that the children of Israel could not steadfastly behold the face of Moses for the glory of his countenance, which what? Glory. glory was to be done away with. So the glory that was on his face was on his face was what? Temporary. Yeah. It was a glory that was supposed to what? Fade. How should not the ministration of the Spirit? He's throwing a dichotomy. There's, he uses Moses as the backdrop of a previous order. How should not the ministration of the Spirit be rather glorious? What ministration? The ministration of the Spirit is the ministration of the New Testament. Yes. Do I have anybody here that's uh, New Testament people? Yes. Yes. So the ministration of the Spirit be rather glorious. For if the ministration of condemnation be glory, talking about the Mosaic system, much more do with the ministration of righteousness exceed in glory. Tell your neighbor, exceed, exceed. in glory. Because we're talking about the presence of the Spirit and His reality. It wants to exceed. So the Mosaic system was an inferior system. Am I boring y'all? This is witness. So y'all on my time. This ain't Sundays. I'm just saying. <laughs> Okay, you gotta you gotta read your Bibles. Amen. Right? For even that which was made glorious, glorious had no glory in this respect. By reason of the glory that excelled. Or in comparison to this. In other words, there was a glory coming greater than the glory Moses had. The same thing Haggai said. Remember? The glory of the latter house should be greater than the glory of the former house. What former house? The Mosaic system. Mm -hmm. Which you can transpose that to say your last church. Mm -hmm. So there's a glory greater than where you've been. Yes. 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 Or what you've heard. Yes. Glory to glory. Yep. Yes. We go, you go from glory to glory. Yeah. Right? Y'all mm -hmm. y'all, model the model now? Yes, sir. In fact, Whoever wrote Hebrews said something that was so profound in Hebrews 10. <laughs> I think it was Paul because this writing is it's consistent with his writing. He made a statement that as long as the first yeah. is standing yeah. or remaining, yeah. he said you don't have access to the second. Yeah. He basically said if you can't get over your old wine, you don't get new wine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can't keep asking God for something you haven't gotten over. You know, it's hard for pastors around here. We got to live up to old people, I mean, people, old pastors, not old people, pastors, but people, <laughs> you know, your previous places. God wants to do something outside of the scope we've been exposed to. And we got to allow that to happen. It says, for if that which is done away was glorious, how much more that which remains is glorious. If, oh, I want to hit this thing. If we can get this, as much as we read and we study and we see all the fantastic things and we see the hand of the Lord, we see his majestic power on display, there is a glory waiting for us now that is far more superior and that's why Paul told the church in Ephesus when he talked about Ephesians 3.20. Now to him to do what? Exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think. Yes. Yes. 
Seeing then that we have such a hope, we use great boldness of speech, not as Moses, which would avail over his face, that the children of Israel could not steadfastly look at the end of that which was abolished. So even he had a veil on his face. And it was passive. It wasn't permanent. It was transitory. But their minds were blinded. For to this day remained the same veil untaken in the mind, or untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament. Which is the veil done away in Christ. Please underline that if you never had. I said this years ago. I will say it again. You've got to underline that because that is a preview to a coming attraction. Which veil is done away in Christ? The veil that Moses had over his face where the people couldn't observe or couldn't see was relegated because you've got to understand it was a glory that he received when he was up in the mountain. Am I right? And then when he came down, the people said, oh, mm, uh -uh, mm, 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 mm. I know, I know God called us to be a priesthood. Because that's what it said in Exodus 9, 19 and 5 and 6. Am I right? He said, I brought you out of eagle's wings. So you can I brought you to myself. That you may become a king and a priest in 19. And in 20, they said, we don't want no part of that system. So Moses had that veil on him. And, this, and, and, and when God said, okay, just like he had a veil on him, I'm going to put a veil on the people. That's what we just read. So he said, when we read the Old Testament without the spirit of wisdom and revelation, we have a veil on us. But the veil that couldn't, <laughs> the, veil that, the veil that they had in the Old Testament, the veil that they had under the, the Mosaic system, couldn't be removed because Jesus has not yet been glorified. Yes. Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, right, yes. has been confirmed by many witnesses. Yes. Therefore, we, us, you, me, us, right, yes. that veil is done away with where? In Christ. Yes. So when I know the reality of the Spirit's presence, guess what? That veil is being done away in Christ. Now that veil is not a one-time thing because you look it up once again. If you look it up in Greek, it is not being done. I mean, not is done, but being done. Is done. Not was done. Is done away in Christ, right? Yeah. Present tense. Mm -hmm. So every, and see, this is it though. This is it. Tell you never, this is it. it. But even to this day when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. There's churches. See, that's why I have this war in me. Because I know what's finished, but when we don't get the veil removed, then I got to articulate what's under the veil. And that what's been done away. I want to talk about what's been gone, what's been removed. And that, let me rephrase that. I don't want to spend all my time talking about what's been done away with. I want to talk about what has arrived. 